Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I know it's been a while. I'm Dave Stevens, and I've been busy with other stuff. You know, I'm a teacher, and I teach uh, cybersecurity, network uh, security, and ethical hacking at the University of Hawaii, Capulana Community College, and I'm now the IT program director of that program. And with me today, I have proudly one of our adjunct faculty, Percy Ellis. Welcome, brother. Hey, how you doing? Welcome aboard. Okay, today let's talk about some of the five biggest headlines of cybersecurity. Yeah. And then on the back half of the show, you're going to tell us all about how to get into drones, because we can use drones for security too, physical and, and cyber, right? And you're going to tell us how to get started, because that's kind of a steep learning curve for some folks. It can be, yeah. Okay. So let's get into uh, Gosnim. It just came out, $100 million stolen. And they, they caught these guys. So this is, uh, what country's here? Uh, the USA, Georgia, Ukraine, Moldova, Germany, and Bulgaria participated in this. And uh, they deployed, uh, Gosnim is the organization, but it's also the combination of two pieces of malware put together, neither of which I can pronounce properly. But it came out to Gosnim, and it's a Trojan. It steals your login credentials, uh, mainly for banking applications. Wow. And uh, they stole $100 million from all of those countries I mentioned, except for the USA. I don't see any USA institutions breached, but that's, I guess that's good for us, but for the rest of the Europe, they use Europol, formerly Interpol, so this is a European Union police force, which I have never heard about until just a couple of days ago, which is odd. Have you ever heard of Europol? No, I've heard of Interpol. Interpol, right? I, well, I guess it's changed, uh, maybe there's another Interpol, I haven't researched it, uh, uh, but this brings up a... Uh, Great point right now. Many websites are initiating multi-factor authentication. Do you use it? Absolutely. Use it at KCC. I use it at my bank. I won't even bank at a place that doesn't use multi-factor authentication. And um, Google, Yahoo, um, even Facebook. I'll use multi-factor authentication from uh, them calling me back with a text one-time password or fingerprint or iris scanners, I use them on my um, mobile, de mobile devices and on my um, uh, pads, my little pads. Right, the phones now, some have a fingerprint reader, some use face recognition, and yes. that could be your second factor of authentication to get into the device, plus the password, or sometimes face is your password, and they also give you the one-time password, also known as an OTP. But mm -hmm. it's important to recognize that this kind of Trojan would not be able to succeed with a multi-factor authentication process. So these banking institutions should really wake up and notice that multi-factor authentication protects their users even when there's a Trojan operating in the background. So again, you don't have to be faster than the bear chasing you in the woods, just faster than the guy next to you, right? Yeah. So you don't have to be super, super, super secure with all these fancy tricks and iris scans and all that, but multi-factor authentication makes you more secure the next guy, right? And 41 institutions were hacked. I like the simple, send me a text, one-time password. That is a nice one. Uh, we should remind our users, though, that uh, the text is not encrypted over a cellular signal, so it can be theoretically taken as a radio frequency transmission between cell towers, sure. and you can get a hold of it. It's highly unlikely because... It's but, a cell transmission. And that password will change every time you try to log in. So you'd have to be logging in, intercepting the authentication credentials, the user ID, the password, and have that one-time password. Got to have everything. Uh, another one, do you use the Google Authenticator? Oh, oh that's great. The Duo, we call it Duo Security for UH, right? Yes. You, you just uh, tap it, and it gives you, for 60 seconds, that six or seven digits that you can use to log in as your second form of ID. And then you see it blink or turn red, and then it cycles to a new number in 60 seconds. So you have, you're on the clock, and then it'll change numbers, yeah. This is a multi-factor authentication, something that you are, something that you have, right, and something that you know, like a password. Well, that's, that, that would be three. Something you have, something you know is two. So two FA or two-factor authentication. So you, you have to have more. your cell phone with you. For that, you do. Yeah, you'd have to have a cell phone or another uh, OTP generator. So you can get that. Uh, Amazon sends them out for its cloud customers, for commercial customers. They'll send you uh, a little battery-operated OTP, which has got the same algorithm and clock synchronized uh, with Amazon. 
That's kind of one of the things with cybersecurity in general for that kind of security, that kind of cryptography. Key generation and key distribution is a problem. So they have to send it via the mail. So it's, if it's intercepted, someone's got your generator, and if they get your password as well, then they can generate that OTP. So uh, if you lose it in the mail or you never get it, you really should tell the vendor so they can send you another one that's logged differently. Um, the first time you use it, doesn't it have to be um, synchronized at that time that you have it similar to when you receive your credit card? I've never received one like that. They always uh, sync it to the manufacturer before they send it out. Oh, okay. So Amazon would order it, and when it got to Amazon, Amazon would key it and synchronize it with their clock, and then they'd send it to you. So all you'd have to do is press a button. When I worked for the Department of Transportation, we had secure ID cards. Okay. And so they came in a key fob, and the six digits would change on your key fob, similar to what you were talking about, or they came in a little credit card size. Oh, that's great. So it's something you have, something you know. Mm -hmm. like, like no one can get inside your brain. So if they don't know your password, that's hidden, even if they steal your ID card. So for this Gosnim, that's a good way to avoid it. Let's go on to... Uh, the <laughs> Facebook has just banned an Israeli company, the Archimedes Group, for influencing elections in these African countries, Nigeria, wow. Senegal, Togo, Angola, Niger, and Tunisia. No Nambia there, by the way. Okay. There's no Nambia. <laughs> Big orange buffoon said there's a Nambia, but there's no Nambia, right? I love making fun of Trump. He's great. Uh, <laughs> Over 200 uh, yeah. Facebook and Instagram accounts with over 2.8 million followers just to influence them. Uh, they were representing themselves as locals, including uh, representing themselves as local news organizations. I love the sophistication of these Facebook attacks where they can actually influence the elections by saying things that aren't even really related to the election. Right. So... This is a good example. They were just talking about the politicians and their, their personal lives. So most of the attacks were, uh, you know, how they live, uh, their affairs, you know, salacious details that uh, weren't always true. But uh, social media, you shouldn't trust this. It's not a news source. Um, and my wife loves Twitter. She's always on Twitter. She gets the news. She says, oh, my gosh, look at this news story. This is incredible. But then you actually go to the media outlets and you start trying to correlate these facts, they don't line up. And it, it, it's amazing to me that people will believe Facebook news or just go to, say, Fox News, one of their affiliates, and believe whatever they say, but then they don't go and see, hey, what about Al Jazeera English? Mm -hmm. What about NPR? What about BBC? Mm -hmm. What about even, I've even had the LA Times not agree with, with Fox News, which is, I grew up with the LA Times. Sure, They're sure. kind of right-leaning. And they usually agree with Fox News. But when they disagree, that's a big red flag. There's some facts missing there. So you grew up in Northern California. San right? Francisco Chronicle, so the Sacramento, Chronicle. Sacramento Bee. And, and left-leaning, right-leaning? You know, I think they try to be fair. So they've had reporters from both sides. And it depends on the issue. But I've noticed the Facebook um, advertising hacks, which can be done by anyone. I can set up a Facebook account and advertise a political point of view are usually hot button issues. Yeah, yeah, they want to get you uh, passionate. They want to get you angry. They want to get you engaged, right? So I, I've seen those. They come on, there was, a, there was a resistance ad with a big fist on it, right? And it turned out to be a fake Russian account for the 2016 election, but it got a lot of people motivated and protesting. They actually went to a protest. And this protest was hilarious because uh, some journalists recognized that it was fake, and they went to this protest, and they passed out big flags that said Trump on them. And they were red, white, and blue, but they weren't the red, white, and blue from America. It was the Russian flag that said Trump on it, and people <laughs> held them up. And, uh, you just pay attention, folks, right? Just pay attention. So Facebook, I go to other news sources, right? What are your favorite news sources? Uh, there's Newsy which is an internet news source, um, CNN, uh, MSNBC, just for cable television. Uh, I only watch Fox News if it's something really important I want to balance. Yeah. But I don't take them too seriously because 
hot button topics. I was surprised. I watched, uh, I actually, <laughs> I dedicated two hours of my life to watch Fox News to see what it, was, what it was doing and why people said it was good or bad. And what I saw was their actual news program seemed to be, and I'm not lying, pretty balanced. But right after that show, immediately following with no warm up, was mm -hmm. just a political pundit saying all these things that I don't agree with. Sure. But it looked like that political pundit was a news person, like another anchor man, like this is another news show. But it's not. It was personal opinion. With all of the, the news anchors that can, they know that they can throw their weight around by pushing hot button issues. I'm not surprised at all that CNN versus Fox is just is so unbalanced. You have to find something in the middle. It's hard to find that. That's why I stick to things like uh, uh, Press Telegram, London, uh, BBC News, the BBC. NPR, uh, Al Jazeera, English Al Jazeera as well, have. yeah. And it, even if you don't agree with their opinions, the common facts in all the stories will align, and you can figure out for yourself what's going on. So I think trying to train people, the young people coming up today, and the older folks, like my parents, I got to train them to actually correlate all this information and come up with your own opinion. Use some critical thinking. Well, we've had NBC, ABC, and CBS for years. Oh, yeah, we grew up with those. Grew up with those. And along comes Fox, MSNBC, and CNN. And you really have to look outside of the United States then to the BBC, Al Jazeera, right. to find out what unbiased opinions are all about. Right. It's important to use some critical thinking to figure out what news is real. Let's go to, uh, I, I got to cover this really quick, uh, data breaches. Uh, data breaches over the last three years have caused massive financial damages. And I always emphasize to companies, you got to put some serious money into cybersecurity. And here's why. These three companies, Marriott, Equifax, Yahoo, their average stock price after those, those incidents over 2018, 17, and 16, their average stock price dropped by 7.5%. For a large company, that's a lot of money. That's massive, right? Their market capitalization decreased, averaged $742 million. I don't even know what that looks like on paper, right? I, a couple thousands all I ever have in my bank account. They're, they're dropping $742 million because they didn't make an investment, not only in their company, but I think it's important to, to emphasize that you should invest in your people because you can't just go hiring a couple cyber guys, right? You've got to train your folks. Yeah, so you have a frontline person deals with the public all day being socially engineered. I went to a show in Las Vegas, I forget which one it was, and I met Kevin Mitnick. Oh, yeah, and yeah. He's a, one of the greatest Fresh social... Fresh out of jail and he's rich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's turned to the other side, though. He's defending companies. But he says, you go for the... Low-hanging low, low fruit. Low-hanging fruit. Yeah, that's, and that's, you're right, the frontline people. So. Train all your people, not just those couple of cyber individuals. You got to get everybody on the same team because, like you were saying to me before the show, it's the weakest link in the chain, mm -hmm. and that's the low-hanging fruit. And they, then you log in to their accounts, and you pivot until you get to the account with the, uh, uh, the passwords or the administrative rights that you need. Right. I think that's that Equifax went down between the two hacks. Yeah? Uh, let's talk about uh, zombie load really quick. Um, Everyone's heard about zombie load. This is one of those uh, Intel processor hacks that you can do, but software can actually look at the speculative processing or the speculative cache in a processor uh, as it hyperthreads. And this is a very fast processing. It makes your computer go 30 to 40 percent faster to process data. They found where software can actually read that cache. And I'm um, here to tell people that there's fixes out there in software and operating systems. Don't disable your hyper-threading, or you're going to go down in performance by a lot. A lot. And you're not going to enjoy that. Uh, you'll go back to the 1990s. That's when so, hyper-threading first came around. I think it was the 46 processor introduced. The, the hyper-threading, yeah, the read-ahead. Yeah, and uh, this is a good thing to have, so don't disable. It doesn't necessarily protect you, as a matter of fact. And uh, to get out of this, update your OS. All, all the time. Just keep updating. Uh, Microsoft has issued stuff, so is AMD, Intel, and Mac OS. Now, how does zombie load infect the computer? Well, I'm going to have to take you after the break. Okay. We'll answer that question. Sure. We'll be right back. Until we come back, everybody stay safe. 
Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome back. Did you miss us? We've been lonely, waiting for you to come back and join us. We're talking about all the ins and outs and tips and tricks to keep you safe in the internet world, the gig economy. Uh, I'm here with Percy Ellis, adjunct faculty in my IT program, and we're here to tell you more about Zombie Load, yeah. which is a end Intel processor vulnerability. Uh, zombie data can be the data that uh, the application that's processing data needs help, so it asks the CPU for some help and then the CPU uses its, ha its cache and it's the data that's speculated, uh, the read ahead data, and uh, you can actually read that data with certain software. So you have to have, like you said, a virus or a Trojan running on your computer, but if you do, uh, browsers can get at it and it can cross boundaries. So if you're using Firefox and that's where the, the data intrusion happened, this, uh, this, Software cache can be read by other programs that are already operating. So your malware doesn't have to be in Firefox or in another application. It can be running independently. But whatever's running on your system, generating that zombie data on your processor, can be read. Now, I read an article about zombie load, and Microsoft and Intel both defended themselves by saying you'd have to be very meticulous about the data that you're gathering. Because, as you know, and maybe not our audience, the information that is in those caches is just bits and pieces yeah. of passwords. And you would have to really know what you're searching for. And then you'd have to be pretty sleuthy to put those little bits and pieces back together, to even form a password. You know what this reminds me of is uh, when you're doing uh, data recovery, Yes. You get bits and pieces because someone's formatted the hard drive or it got thrown in a lake or something. You don't get the whole thing. But the software that you run to reconstruct the data speculates what could be in there. And it's, for the most part, I think it's fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's getting better. Right? I've been using this stuff since the 1990s, and uh, it's pretty darn good now. There's free stuff out there called Reco Recover spelled wrong, mm -hmm. recover. And it's free Windows utility, uh, hasn't had any malware attacks that I'm aware of, but it can actually recover uh, like a formatted hard drive and it gets all the files and it just speculates what's in them based on what it found. And for the most part, it's pretty darn good. It's actually helped me save my thesis because I <laughs> deleted it accidentally a long time ago. But uh, The forensics toolkit it, as well. The forensics toolkit, um, which is on Cali. Oh, I didn't know that. I believe it is. I might be wrong. Check me on this. Okay, Somebody sure. write me a letter <laughs> to say this is, yes, it's not, or, or yes, it is, or no, it's not. Let's move on to uh, the WhatsApp malware that everyone's talking about. And, and I just, just installed, installed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably installed the, the good version, right? It, this is, they've already come out with Facebook issued um, an update. So if you installed the update, uh, you should be okay. The, the WhatsApp, the, the scary part about it was that if you have it loaded and I have WhatsApp loaded, all I have to do is call your phone on WhatsApp using that application. You don't even have to answer. Oh. And I get into your phone. I can turn on your camera and get all your information. I have admin rights to it. And uh, oh, it's, there's a, there's a multi-level uh, step process that you have to go through to make sure that this is not going to affect you anymore if you've had this before. Or, and I, I don't think you will, but uh, you should update the operating system on your phone. You should update the application or delete it if you're not going to use it. 
and I wouldn't keep it running. Right, right. Yeah, keep it in its sandbox. Keep it off unless you're actually going to use it. Well, I only use it for cross-platform. So yeah, I, someone has an iPhone and they want to do a video chat with me, and I have my uh, Samsung Android. There's a problem with Android, right? You can't update your OS. Sure I can. How do you do that? Uh, there are updates that are issued, and you get an alert on your phone. And How often does that happen? Samsung used to be notorious for not issuing updates. Um, I could check my phone and tell you what version it is. Uh, and when you go into your system, you can say, update to the newest version. Oh, I did not know so that. You can, you, can do, you can check and do it manually, but usually it's a push notification that you get. Oh, that's great. Yeah, um, so uh, you just get the little uh, badge saying there's an update. There's an update. On, uh, on the iPhone, yeah. Make sure, it's, make sure it's plugged in and you get the little robot and he starts feeding himself updates. <laughs> Is it that that's a graphic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can you set that on the Android to do automatically when you're asleep? You can do, yeah, you can set timing like that, but every now and then, especially if I hear about the latest update, I, I'll go ahead and manually do it. Well, that's good to know. Samsung used to be just Terrible, notorious for all, not giving all updates. Android. Yeah, and and the reason is every Android build is tied to the manufacturer of that device, right? LG, Samsung, sure. whoever's making it, Google, and they and they put out the update for their build of Android because they're all particular to the phone, right? Whereas the iPhones are all generic. We all get the same iOS, and if it sucks, it sucks. Everyone just suffers. <laughs> we all just got to get through it. But uh, you like the Samsung and the updates. It's, it's going okay for you? It's, it's going very well for me. I, I think we just got an update last month. Because oh, I remember good. having to plug my phone in and not use it for 20 minutes. That's a push update. It was a push. Oh, that's great. That's good. It's good to know. Uh, so for WhatsApp, install the new version of WhatsApp if you have to use it. Keep it off. Mm -hmm. Update your, your operating system on your phone. And, uh, and don't use it unless you have to. The, Crazy thing is, Israel's in the news for this one too. Their NSO group is the one who uh, created the software and somehow it's in the wild. And they, they, they say that we're only selling it to law enforcement, which is troubling in itself, but it's not being used by private enterprise. Well, yeah, everything that gets leaked like that is going to be used by... It's all getting leaked. It, nothing, nothing stays within their realm anymore. You know, this, is, this is how we got uh, the shadow brokers. They use leaked stuff all the time. Have you heard the phrase, data wants to be free, or software wants to be free? I do. I know that phrase. Hey, let's talk about drones. We're going to change topics here really quick. We're talk about your starter drone here. So I'm somebody who doesn't know anything about drones. I've always wanted to get into them. Their drones are being used in uh, movies and, and arms. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, even for painters, construction, security. Uh, everyone wants to use a drone. Now, the first time I picked up a little mini drone and I got the controls, it launched, it hovered up for a second. I pushed the little lever to the side. It didn't do anything, so I pushed more, and then it shot across the room and hit a wall. And that's the last time I could use it, because it broke. There, I worked for a company here locally. Um, I think it's called the Hawaii Drone Academy. It's run by Samantha Kimsey. And I was training with a helicopter pilot by the name of Alex, and he showed me some really useful tricks in learning to fly a drone for the first time. So you're right. It'll hover, and you can manage that maneuver. The first thing you should do is go forward and use your right stick on your controller to move the drone forward. And very gentle movements of that right stick. Then you'll want to form a box. A little bit to the Oh, sounds right. like dance class when we were kids. You're going to do the box step. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then back. Yeah. And then to the left. So you want to repeat this motion until you've got it In, in an open space. And you could do it. You should probably do it in an open space. I should, because I broke your other drone. <laughs> <laughs> you crashed. You I crashed it. it. <laughs> and it had... Sensors around it. Now, this one does not have the sensors around it that prevent it from bumping into walls. But it does have little protectors here. I like that. Yeah, this is more to protect. If this was to come and hit you in the face without these yeah. protectors, it could hurt. It probably wouldn't. These are pretty soft. So um, propellers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you might get a scratch a nick, but 
they are have they have drones that have really nice shielding. You can run them into people. So not recommended, by the way, audience. Don't run these into people. We're not advocating that. So I have in this bag a controller. Okay. And I'll so I'll anyway, let's just talk about the, this one real quick. This is, uh, you said this is $100, about that? Yeah, $100, and it comes with this controller. Which is a PS2 controller or Xbox controller. It looks controller. like an Xbox yeah. controller, yeah. yeah. It's just a Bluetooth controller. This is called the Gamester. And you'll see me pushing on the right stick. So this is forward and back? Forward, back, left, and right. Okay. And you just want to form those boxes. Now, if you were to go left and right with this joystick, Stick controller. Uh -huh. It turns the. Oh, it turns the body of the craft. Yeah. So it points in a different direction. Okay. So your second thing you want to learn how to do is go forward, turn, go forward, turn, go backwards. And this turn. is helpful when there's a camera. When you have a camera mounted on that, because you want to aim the camera at different things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there's different camera maneuvers that you might want to try. The trucking shot is just strafing left to right. And then you want, want to try what they call a roadie and DJ, um, DJI parlance, where you go back. So that's called a droney, excuse me. A droney? A droney, yeah. Okay. And so you, you have your target on the ground. And you back up like that? And you that? back up like that. Really great for cinematic shots. And there's a lot of pre-programmed cinematic shots that you can, you can use. And that's what I mainly use when I'm going out for aerial, Aloha aerial um, imaging. Well, let's, let's stop there for a second, because you have a lot of examples of these shots. Yes, I do. Uh, at your YouTube site. You want to give yourself a little plug really quick? Sure. Uh, visit Aloha Aerial Imaging, and you'll see some great videos. The ones that's been getting the most attention is the video we took at Chinaman's Hat. Oh, that was great. Where Ross, it was Ross on the Ross, island standing, yeah. waving at the top, and you flew all the way out there. This is several thousand meters away from yeah. you. Yeah. And another uh, example of that, we went out to Rabbit Island, which is uh, probably a mile out. And we went to the far side of Rabbit Island. Which no, hardly anyone ever knows what that looks like, right? Because you can't see it from, um, by the way, audience, if you don't live in Hawaii, those are two mini islands off the coast of the island of Oahu uh, on the um, windward side. On the windward side. On the windward side, yeah. And I just got out there and I set it to do a circle of the entire island. And it this, automatically does this. Yes, yeah, it's just a point of one, interest. Yes. No, not this one. Yeah, this, you have a fancy this one. This is far too small. But this is a great drone to learn how to do all of those cinematic um, shots. And you're, you, you can do them in a small environment. Uh, you don't want to fly drones over people's heads. Now, you don't need a license for this one. You do not. Oh, but the big ones, you went out and got licensed. Half a pound. To 50 pounds. Half a pound to 50 pounds, you need a license. You need a license. Okay. And, and how much was that? Oh, gosh. I forget. The, to, the actual FAA exam is not too bad. No. And I need to take it again probably in a year. So you have to redo it every year? Every, every two to three years. Every two to three years. Wow. That was quick. We're, all, we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> that was too quick. We'll do more on this. Um, I just asked Percy, audience, you should be aware, I just asked Percy to... Consider creating a uh, junior level course on using drones for security. And we might be teaching that in the next year or so at Capulani Community College. Get ready for FAA ground school part one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming, brother. Thank I you. appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, for Cyber Underground again. Uh, please come back. I will be back in about four weeks. Uh, I know I'm on vacation. It's going to be a little while. Try to bear with me and I'll bring you some great updates and some great facts and some interesting stories, maybe from a land far away. Until then, stay safe.